Hi everyone, this is Ahmed Karimli and welcome to Be Efficient TV. The mission of this web TV show is to boost the efficiency of your business and life with tips and tricks from leading experts. And uh, now we are recording a special series with Speak in Dubai and today I have with me Ruben West. Yes. He is an expert in public speaking. Welcome to the show, Ruben. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you. It's pre Thank you. pleasure to be here. My pleasure. Who is Ruben West? Well, I tell you, I come from the United States in Topeka, Kansas. I come from humble beginnings, but what I've learned is that over time, if you really put your mind to something, and if you really believe it, and you look at the possibilities versus the problems, I just believe you can achieve just about anything. How did you start as a public speaker? I always wanted to speak. My m mother was a minister, had four uncles that were ministers, my grandfather was a minister. But I never wanted to be a minister. I just wanted to speak to people because I think sometimes certain things like religions and politics divide people. And I wanted to have a voice that brought people together. And so I thought about the ways that I could share my message or share my voice that would bring people together. And I remember meet, reaching out to Les Brown. He's a world-renowned public speaker. He was voted as one of the top five speakers in the world. And I sent him an email. And they said, he's not going to respond to you. And I said, I believe he's going to respond to me. And literally the next day he messaged me back. Mm -hmm. And when I talked to him, he said, I've been looking for you. I've been looking for somebody that was hungry. And so I, I reached out to him and I connect with him and, that, and we started working together. Uh, how long do you think it takes, like in terms of time, to, for someone from scratch to start and become a public speaker? I think you have to be realistic. Uh, I think it can take several years. I think it's like mastering anything. If you're going to be a doctor, it takes several years. If you're going to be an attorney, it takes several years. If you're going to be a pilot, it takes several years. If you're going to be a speaker, it takes several years. But one thing about a doctor, an attorney, or an, a, a pilot, you know what they all do? Is they all work with somebody else who had done it before. They all learn from other people. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that people can make is to feel like you can do it all on your own. I think you have to work with someone who can show you some things that you didn't know was there. And they can help you avoid some mistakes and they can help you cut that time in half. Do you, is there is a system, a spe special form or formula to reach out to people and get a response like you have done? And, or it was luck, luck or is there is a formula for that? Or? You know, I think this is, that's an excellent question and I gl I'm glad you asked me that. I think one of the things you have to be willing to do is reach out to someone who I consider a guru. Uh, so I study martial arts and we have the grand masters of the different martial arts. But in the end, they don't want their art to die. See, when they were younger, they, they were trained hard, they competed, they, they did all these things, but as they moved up in age, their most important goal now is making sure someone is carrying on that art. And I think if you reach out to someone who is in the twilight of their career, that they've built up all of this knowledge and information and systems, they don't want it to die. They don't want to take it to the grave. And so they're looking for somebody that's young and hungry that they can train and take over. To continue the legacy. Yes, and to continue point. the leg legacy. So I think you really have to find out who is it that you can reach out to that really wants to share their information with you so that it can be a legacy. What's the first step to become a public speaker? I think the first thing you have to do is you have to make up in your mind that that's what you want to do and then be willing to go through the work. There's not going to be an easy task. It's, it's a lot of work. You're going to have to start training your mind and training your brain and looking at life a little bit differently because you have to see certain situations differently. So I think the first thing is to make up in your mind that that's what you want to do and then decide what is it that you want to speak on and who is it that you want to speak to. And the next step? I think once you determine who that person or group that you want to speak to is, you have to make sure that you formulate the message for them. I think you have to figure out what is it that you know? What is it that you have that can benefit these individuals? And why is it that they want to know it from you? Whenever you start speaking, uh, my mentor taught me this, people want to know three things. Who are you? What do you have? And why should I care? And if you can't answer those three things, you're not ready to start speaking yet. So you have to be able to tell them who they are. You have to be able to tell them what is it that you could have that can benefit them and why should they listen to you. And the next step? Then the next step, I, I would say that you have to develop your brand. You have to be known for something. You have to create what I consider a me only. Uh, so many people are me too's. In other words, I do that too and I do that too. But what they're looking for is a unique voice in the marketplace. And so you have to decide what is your me only. What is it that you have or that you do 
that no one else does. For me, as a speaker, I have a signature speaking style assessment. So I have an assessment that people take and it tells them which one of the five major speaking styles they are. Are they a heart-centered speaker, a motivational type speaker, a drill sergeant type speaker, a comedian type speaker, or are they uh, a motivator? Yeah, or a scientist, I'm sorry, a scientist is number five. After the brand, then you communicate the message? Yeah, I think so. You have to have what your brand is, what your me only is, and then you start reaching out to companies, organizations, groups, and showing them why you are a unique fit and one of the best fits for what they're looking for. I want to reflect on your background, like is anyone from any background can become a speaker? What's your background before that? My background, interesting enough, I, I own a martial arts school. I studied karate uh, and I've had that school for 20 years. I moved the chair. And <laughs> <I> moved <that. laughs> yeah. I've had that school for 20 years now. Another thing mm. that I did is I was in the Gulf War in the military in the 91 and I, assist, I, I was a surgical tech where we pass instruments to the doctors and one of the doctors said, Ruben, I'm going to teach you to assist because it's not nine to five. It's until the patients stop coming. And once I got a chance to do that, I said, man, excuse me, when I go back home, I want to assist surgeons. And when I went back and told my director at the hospital, she said, well, you're not, no, like you're a surgical tech. I said, I know, but over in the war, I got a chance to assist and I learned all this stuff. And she said, no, <laughs> you know, and that's one of the things that people have to realize. No matter what you want to do, there's going to be some people who tell you no. There's going to be some people who say, no, just stay where you're at, keep doing what you're doing, you, you, that's enough. But for me, it wasn't enough. For me, it was an idea that I was given. And here's one thing I realized. A lot of times we get an idea for a product, a service, an invention, and we don't know how it would work, but we think, man, that would be a good idea. And then we don't do anything. And then six months later, a year, two years later, he's like, man, I thought of that. The very same thing. Someone did Yeah, that. but somebody else did it. Here's what I want you to realize. It's not what you think of. It's what you act on. The universe reward people who take action differently than those who don't. What helps people to execute? I think they have to know their why. They have to understand why is it that they are going to take this action. And here's what I would suggest, that you write down three to five reasons why you must take this next step, whether it's starting a business, three to five reasons why you must start this business or why you must become a speaker or why you must build your business or build your team. You have to have those reasons because there's tough days. And on those tough days, you can pick up that list. You can carry that list in your pocket or in your wallet or put it on your bathroom mirror. And on those tough days, and, and we all have tough days, They're, they happen for every single person. On those tough days, you can go back to that list and realize why it was that you had to start this and why it is that you must finish it. So you don't quit. So you don't quit. Because the temptation is always there. The temptation is always there. And sometimes you can't see the end. Like you, you have an idea of how you want it to come out, but you don't know how it's going to work. I didn't know how I was going to be a speaker. I just said I was going to. I didn't know how I was going to start a martial arts school. I just said I was going to. I didn't know how I was going to become a surgical assistant. I didn't know that I'd be able to write the textbook, write the college curriculum and license it to different schools, write the scope of practice, the job description, assist in every surgical specialty. I had no idea how it was going to work. But you know what I had? I had some reasons why I had to make it work. And because of those reasons, I just kept taking the next step after the next step after the next. And what happens is when you're going all in, when you're going all out, people show up for you. I was driving my car and the car had beside me had stopped, ran out of gas. And the guy had opened the door and he was literally trying to steer the car and push it to the gas. And I was watching him and thinking, <laughs> he's never gonna be able to do that. But because he was working so hard, I said, you know what I'm gonna do? Let me help this guy. So I pulled my car over, I got <laughs> out. Another guy come up and we're trying to push the car. It really wasn't going, but there's three of us now. Then some other guys started coming up and we started getting the car to move it. After a while, the guy whose car it was, he shut the door and jumped in, and we pushed it all the way up into the gas station. But he's just steering. But what if he would have just been sitting in there out of gas and said, hey, come push my car? No. So you should be persistent enough, and when you are persistent enough, people will show up. I believe you. the universe mm -hmm. rewards you when you step out and take action, and people see that you're serious, and they see that you're not going to give up, and they see that you're going to try and do it no matter what. Anytime somebody sees you, somebody sees a person taking on something that's more than they can handle, but they're giving it their all, it makes you want to help. See, I wanted to help the guy. I was like, man, look at this guy trying to push this car. He's never going to do it, but he's still out there. I'm going to go help him. 
I think you have to say, I don't know how it's going to work. I, I don't know when it's going to work, but I'm going to be working to make it work. And then when you start letting people know that this is what I'm trying to do, and do you have anything that can help me? Do you know anybody that can help me? Do you have any resources? When they see that you're serious, I think people join in. Last question, uh, do you advise people to learn public speaking online? I think you can learn it online, or I think you can learn it in, in a seminar setting or one-on-one. -on -one. I don't think there is a, a, a problem with learning it online. I think the real issue is, do you have the discipline to do the work, because it's still work. One of the benefits of working with a coach is it's like soccer or any other sport. The coach is right there making you do it. When it's online, there's nobody making you do it. And mm -hmm. if you don't have the discipline to do it yourself, then you may falter. So I think you can learn it online, you can learn it with a coach, or you can learn it in a seminar setting. The key is, no matter which way you learn it, you have to understand that there's going to be some work that you have to do. No one can do it for you. But if you're willing to put in the work, I believe you'll make it. How people can reach you, Ruben? Yes, sir. They can reach me on my website. It is www.rubenwest360.com. Rubenwest. 360.com. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Be efficient and stay efficient and see you soon with another leading expert.